the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, we want to use this morning just to have a little bit of reflection. We've still got half an hour before breakfast, so I want you to use this time. And for the reflections and um, for my session tomorrow, um, I want us to focus on the book of Acts, chapter 2. And I was just reading this morning and picked up a couple of points that I want you to reflect on this morning during your quiet time. We all know the first part of Acts 2. Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came the sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared on them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we have this picture of, of a dynamic God who fulfills his promise and came upon his disciples and apostles as he had told them. And it was for this very day that they were being prepared because this was going to be the start of things. Now, just a, a couple of verses I want you to focus on this morning. As we keep re reading down, uh, we read from verse 5, now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and when they heard this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. This is the challenge of ministry we have. The challenge is that we need to be gracious and humble and simple and loving and Christ-like. But that entails this. It entails making a sound that gets people's attention so that they leave whatever they're doing and they come and they try to witness it. But at the same time, it confuses them. Why does it confuse them? Because somehow they understand it. And that's, that's the crux here. As servants, we can make sounds. But if people don't understand them, they're of no value at all. They're just sounds. So, you know, had these people in Jerusalem heard this stuff going on, came and just stood there and saw men babbling, wouldn't have made a difference. So in our ministry, we want to do two things. In our ministry, we want to be those who attract attention, not to ourselves, but to the power of God in us, saying, this is what it's about. Pointing always to him, not pointing to ourselves. Because we have this problem of, of, of humility. I feel if I attract too much attention, that it's against being humble. But I need to attract attention to him, in which case, it's not about me at all. So this morning, I want us to reflect on that. How do we serve in a way that makes people stop and gather and look? That's the first point. So we do things, whether it's, you know, whether it's the conferences or, or City Mission or Grapevine or, or Focus or you know, your own parish ministries and your youth ministries, wherever you are, to do something that where people come and say, I, I want to be part of this. This is different. But then, when they are there, that they understand, that it makes sense to them, each in his own language. It's being able to reach out to people and give a message that is broad, yet at the same time comprehensible. People need to understand it. And our challenge is 
not just being professional servants or professional speakers who go out there, you know, give a couple of sound bites, um, throw a couple of verses at people, then walk away. And it's not really relevant. They didn't understand it. It didn't matter. So let's focus on those two points. Attracting people to Christ and then when we have their attention, giving them a message that makes sense. 